everyone! Today I'm reviewing Campbell's 100 Best Recipes and trying out their chicken tetrazzini recipe. Is it going to be good? Is it going to be bad? Keep watching. If you're new here, welcome! I'm Anna. I make videos about vintage cookbooks and retro recipes. If you like that sort of thing, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on the red button below. And if you're not new here, welcome back! If you'd like to skip ahead to the recipe, you can go to this timestamp. So, Campbell's 100 Best Recipes. This book was published in 1977, and I think you can kind of tell by the cover art. We're getting into that part of the 70s, you know, the late 70s, where things are very, you know, rust and brown and that kind of thing. However, we do have some very cheerful illustrations inside. So this book is chock full of these colorful pen drawings. I particularly enjoyed this illustration because we have these what looks like cans of Campbell's soup with ice cubes in them. I think they're suggesting we drink chilled iced tomato soup for a refreshing beverage. These mugs, can we just take a look at these mugs and really appreciate them? I want this set of mugs. <laughs> if they're real, I'm on the hunt. Did anybody else's mom or grandma have a chicken like this? I'm assuming this is one of those like ceramic chickens where there's a basket on the bottom and then you can remove the whole chicken and put something inside. We have a fondue pot sighting. This is not the only fondue pot sighting in this book. I also think we found the matching plates to those mugs that they showed earlier. They look like they're the same shade of blue. It looks like we're gonna be cooking up some beef cubes in this fondue pot. In addition to the drawings, we also have some really wonderful photos. Speaking of a fondue sighting, we have a photograph of an orange fondue pot. This one looks more like a cheese fondue. That's my kind of fondue. And in fact, on this other page, they do have a fondue recipe. Of course, they use Campbell's cheddar cheese soup in this recipe. <laughs> I'm gonna say that savory gelatin molds probably were falling out of fashion by this time, but we do happen to have an aspic in this book. It is pretty if you disregard what is in it. <laughs> and maybe this is someone else's thing. It's just not my thing. So there's a cheese layer, your gelatin, of course, milk, cottage cheese, chopped cucumber, and minced onion. And then your aspic layer, gelatin, condensed tomato soup, lemon juice, dill, and diced cooked shrimp. I don't know, maybe it's not so bad. I mean, I obviously cannot eat this. The shrimp would send me to the hospital. Texturally, I, I don't think I would enjoy this very much. You might enjoy this. If you think you'd like this recipe, please let me know in the comments. One of the things I love most about these vintage cookbooks, other than the recipes, of course, I love the tableware, I love the glassware. I love these glasses so much. If I ever see these in an antique store, they're coming home with me. There are all these little nuggets on the side, you know, little bits of advice. This one says, plan a cozy oven supper for a wintry eve and serve this honey casserole. Honey casserole? I'm sorry, what? Oh, homie. <laughs> homie, not honey. There is no honey casserole. I found a Campbell kid. I didn't know he was back there. I always love the names of some of these recipes. This one jumped out at me. Frisky Sours. <laughs> condensed beef broth, half a cup of water, two tablespoons of lemon juice and six ice cubes. There's no whiskey in this. <laughs> what a disappointment for some people. Like you go to hand your guest a drink and they think <laughs> they're getting, they think they're getting something else and it's cold beef broth. <laughs> Guess what y'all? We got a teenager's dancing party. Teenagers will line up in a hurry to partake of this buffet with an Italian theme. Nuts and chips. Mizza pizza, which we have a recipe for here. This is a mizza pizza. Buttered Italian bread, Coney Islands. So we have both a mizza pizza and like a Coney dog. So like a chili dog. It's a very interesting mix of, of things to have. <laughs> Fruit kebabs and then bisque tortoni. What is that? There's no explanation. Is that a recipe in here? <laughs> Come to my teenage bisque party. <laughs> Lunch for grandma's friends. Set a frilly table complete with the best china and tea roses in a crystal vase to complement a fancy menu. Here's the fancy menu. Cups of hot tomato chantilly, which is just condensed tomato soup with some whipped cream on it. <laughs> Minced chicken and salmon, finger sandwiches, cranberry relish on lettuce, butterscotch brownies, and hot tea. You know grandma's in their hot tea. Is the male animal roaring for his food? I sure hope not, like that's ridiculous. Call the manhandlers. 
such as bean with bacon, beef, chili beef, minestrone, noodles and ground beef, scotch broth or vegetable. How many vegetable beef, how many times is there beef? Is it just like man equals beef? <laughs> Soup on the rocks. The easiest and most popular of frosted soups. <laughs> I'm not having a frosted soup. Simply fill a broad glass with ice cubes, pour beef broth right from the can <laughs> over the cubes. Garnish with a slice or wedge of lemon or lime. <laughs> I will not, I will not. So as I mentioned earlier, I am making tetrazzini. I'm specifically making chicken tetrazzini, but you can use other kinds of meats. It's actually a stovetop recipe, which is pretty interesting. It, it seems very casserole-esque, like you should put this in a dish and bake it, but this all comes together on the stovetop. And we do happen to have a photo. So that is what it looks like right there. Very tetrazzini-esque. So we've got chopped pimentos, we've got our noodles. You know, they're really making it look fancy, but this recipe comes together very quickly and very easily and with very few ingredients actually. I feel like tetrazzini is a very like 60s, 70s thing. It was maybe before that, but that's that's kind of what it makes me think of. This is in the section of the book that features Italian cuisine as well. I, I Something tells me that this is not super authentic, but it could be good. We're making up some tetrazzini. I'm specifically using chicken. It says you could use ham turkey. So this could be a really good recipe to keep in your back pocket around Thanksgiving when you have all of that leftover turkey or Easter when you have all of that leftover ham. In saucepan, cook onion in butter until tender. So I've got my butter here. We're going to heat that pan up. You may see Dottie pop into frame a little bit. She sticks pretty close to me nowadays. She's just kind of like my little sous chef. Actually, she's probably the head chef. She's just making sure I'm doing things right. <laughs> Got onions, I grated these as I usually do. You could just dice them if you wanted to. I just happen to like them better this way. I'm just gonna cook those until like, they get a little bit soft. Blend in soup, water, and cheese. So good old Campbell's cream of mushroom, of course. I happen to really like this kind when I have to use cream soup. And usually I'll just stock up with a few cans when it's on sale. So a lot of times like around holidays, ooh yeah. We're having a reaction <laughs> around holidays, like Thanksgiving especially, because you use this in your green bean casserole. Got my water and my cheese. That, that does not look great, but it will look great soon, I promise. <laughs> oh, there she is. There she is, checking on my work. So the cheese is melted. That did not take very long. Add chicken. So I have one cup of shredded chicken. I like to have shredded chicken, leftover chicken in my freezer for stuff like this or to add to salads or noodles or whatever. It's just kind of a nice thing to have. I think this is actually left over from when I cooked a whole chicken in the crock pot. Ooh, Dottie. <laughs> there she is again. So I added my chicken. This is like zoom in. It's not taking long. Pimento. So I've got my diced pimentos here and I gotta say, until I started this channel, I don't think I'd ever purchased a jar of pimentos in my entire life. And I've probably gone through four or five just making videos. There's been a real uptick in pimento purchasing since I started doing this. We've got parsley. You're supposed to use fresh parsley. I don't have any, so we're gonna just go the dried parsley route. Just cut down on the amount that it says in the recipe for fresh because dried is a little bit more potent. And spaghetti. So I've got cooked spaghetti. Pro tip, when you are making a casserole that requires like cooked pasta or cooked noodles, like pre-cooked, add a little bit of chicken bouillon powder or better than bouillon to the cooking water. Just enough to, you know, boost the flavor. I'm not saying make full-blown chicken broth, just maybe like, I don't know, throw, throw a bouillon cube in there, throw a teaspoon of better than bouillon and I think it really helps boost the flavor of those noodles. And I did that here. Okay, well, I just need to heat this through and then we're done. I mean, that did not take long at all. Uh, I think I've been cooking for eight minutes. <laughs> With the pasta being pre-cooked, that really helps. But I think if you're in a hurry, you could definitely start boiling your water for the pasta. And once you start cooking the pasta, maybe start making the sauce, and then you'll have dinner in probably 
15, 20 minutes, something like that. It's not gonna take you very long. Okay, well, this is complete. Ta-da! So I think it's time to give it a taste. How do we look? What do we think? Looks like Tetrazzini. So I just have a little bit to taste here. I'll probably eat a bigger bowl for lunch. See how we did. Mmm, that's really good, actually. Surprisingly, I don't think it needs to be put in the oven, really. I mean, you could put this in a casserole dish and sprinkle the top with cheese and all of that if you wanted to, but if you're in a hurry, like, this is great. I can really taste the pimentos. So if you don't like pimentos, I would say cut back or leave them out. But then, you know, it's not really tetrazzini anymore. I feel like pimentos are the thing that makes tetrazzini tetrazzini. I'm having an excellent time with this. This is delicious. I think this recipe was a success. It says it makes three servings. I mean, I think, yeah, three servings, maybe two very generous servings. So this is kind of a small batch recipe as well, but again, like really good to keep in your back pocket. If you've got leftover shredded turkey at Thanksgiving or ham at Easter, or if you just need a really, really quick dinner. If you are particularly interested in Campbell's soup recipes, I do have a couple of more on my channel, so I will go ahead and link those. I even made Campbell's soup cookies, so yeah, check that one out for sure. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel by clicking on the red button below. I post videos about food, vintage cookbooks, and retro recipes every single week. Thanks again, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.